Hey everyone, it's Evan here from The Trade Risk on Wednesday, August 16th here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets, the current market environment, and then finish off looking at some sector analysis. If you're new here, we do these market recaps twice a week. We do midweek on Wednesday and end of week on Friday. If you like the format, if you find these videos informative, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's in the bottom right hand corner. You can click that subscribe button. For those who have heard me with this spiel and have been around for a while, thanks for watching and let's get into the charts. So the S&P 500 here, another dull day, finished up uh, 18 basis points, 45 cents here in the SPY ETF. And last uh, yesterday was, was basically another dull day, um, you know, three cents to the downside, basically a flat session two days in a row. So where did we start from the week? Well, we had a, a fairly eventful start to the week. On Monday, uh, we sort of came in, the world had not ended, and markets got a nice pop to the upside, S&P rallying up over 1%, getting back above the highs here from Thursday. And that's sort of my line in the sand uh, at this point here, at least in the very short term, uh, is, is this is this bar here from last Thursday, this, this kind of lo loud um, breakdown bar that's sort of technically uh, significant move here uh, in the market here in the S&P 500 on Thursday as we broke below this multi-week range. Well, we are now back above it. Uh, we're not convincingly above it, right? We're kind of just teetering right in here, right in this sideways mess that we were in for basically most of July. And as long as we're above there, I'm willing to uh, sort of, you know, be neutral on this market, so to speak. If we start to lose this 246 level, if we start to break back down from this range, uh, as and if it looks like we're going to head back down and kind of fill this gap and perhaps retest these lows, then I start to lean more bearish, at least in the short term. This this market right here ultimately is just, I mean, it looks like a complete headache. I'm seeing lots of mi mixed signals um, and it's really uh, a market that I don't want to have a tremendous amount of exposure in just because it's so sort of uncertain here in the short term. Um, and I really just would not want to be trying to trying to pick a direction for the next day or two because uh, there, there's just a lot of conflicting signals. I could make a good case, I think, for for either continued upside here or a rollover with this being kind of like the, the, the first impulse leg to the downside that broke support. We're rallying up. If this starts to roll over, you probably got a decent sell signal to come back in and fill this gap, at least in the short term. But really getting follow through below these lows, I think that's what you really want to see. I think you want a break of this trend line, this trend line that that extends from the very beginning of this year and a break of yes last week's lows. If you get those two things, uh, I think it's very safe. You know, you you, ha you have evidence enough there that um, the trend is starting to change. You'd pr uh, presumably have that lower high in here, and you'd have this break of trend and uh, potentially a new lower low coming in if that actually happens. Now, if it doesn't, if this market just wants to completely move sideways here into the rest of August and just chop around two days down, two days up, and and really just drive everything everybody nuts, um, which I think is perfectly reasonable and seems to, you know, probably suit this time of year also, uh, then that's something we, sh we should also be prepared to prepared for uh, and be open-minded about. So for me, bottom line, um, you know, I have very little interest being exposed to this market one way or the other. Uh, I think having, you know, reasonable amount of cash on hand right now um, makes a lot of sense. And again, this, of course, when you say something like that, it all depends on your strategy and time frame. But being an active swing trader, I think this is a time where uh, you don't have to trade. And, and I think that's the beauty. Uh, and sometimes we forget about that as retail traders is you don't have to actually make a trade every day. You can let the market settle in, uh, let it get to a, to a better area. Even if it's just back up here at 248, rolls over at highs, that's maybe a safer spot to sort of fade and play that mean reversion trade. Or on on the other hand, if it starts to come back down here, retest these lows, looks like it's going to hold and, and you know you want to play this bounce off of the trend line, double bottom, that's the type of thing, uh, then you can make that trade as well. But but just you know don't frustrate yourself in here um, in, in kind of a middle of a range or when the market just really isn't giving you too much signal. Again, uh, if you have signal here, if, if, if you find this to be a, a spot that you want to transact at, then then you know by all means uh, carry out with your system. So uh, that that's basically it. I mean, this 
this market's just something that I don't want to do a tremendous amount with uh, for my type of tr trading strategy, uh, you may find that a bit different. Again, um, if you go to the weekly chart here, you can see we're up 1.16%. So we're up on the week. We did not follow through immediately to last week's follow through. So this bigger picture, again, um, this bigger trend, when you start to look at this, this perspective here, you can see it's still very much business as usual. It's kind of a crawling grind higher here uh, and nothing has changed much on that weekly time frame. Now, if we go down to the IWM, you can see this is clearly uh, sort of a, a, a seller's market here in the sense that it is positioned sort of bearishly below this eight and 20 period moving average. Those are my uh, personal favorite moving averages to have on for the shorter term uh, momentum style trading that we do. So the 8 and 20 bearishly aligned and we are prices below it. You can see we did pop back up into that declining 8 period and we're basically failing here. We still haven't closed the gap from Monday, uh, but you can see market looking fairly vulnerable here. And note the trend line that comes extends from December of 2016. We're basically uh, again testing and teetering on that support level. It hasn't been broken in the past. It always gets tested. It looks Looks like it's at its worst and then the magical bid appears and bounces us higher so is that going to happen again again uh, who you know who knows uh, it, it's very mixed signals here and it's something that I don't want to take any type of bet on right now but uh, if I want to be a seller if I want to be a bear here IWM is uh, the laggard although it's had you know again a move all the way from 144 down to 137 so do you want to be a seller right here uh, again I'll leave that to you to ask yourselves based on your strategy and time frame. The NASDAQ 100, uh, four days up in a row here, uh, not really uh, large days all in itself. But again, last Friday, we had 76 basis points to the upside. We had a 1.3% update on Monday. And then we had just two minor updates here, Tuesday and Wednesday. So we're four days up, uh, again, completely back above this 142.50 area that was sort of that multi-week low support uh, at the end of July, beginning of August. And we're uh, very much here just trading inside of this range, new high is up around 145.50 or so. If we got to close, uh, actually, if only uh, need to close into the 145s, which is 80 cents here from here, uh, and that would be a new closing high for the queues. So just uh, be aware how close we are to new to making new all-time closing highs here in the queues. Could happen very quickly. Maybe this was a sufficient enough washout, and we can start to march higher. Again, anything's possible. I am just um, taking a more hands-off approach right now and letting this market sort of work itself out. We are above the 8 and 20 period moving average here, which is bullishly aligned, complete opposite situation from what you're seeing in the IWM. Hence, again, the mixed signals that I think we're seeing here in the market. So that's it. Overall, uh, that's the landscape. I think that's all I really have to say about it. Um, try not to frustrate yourself or overtrade this type of market. That's my advice uh, to the majority of you active guys out there. Let's uh, jump into some other markets here. We'll go to TLT. So TLT, we, we still have a position on in this. Um, it's slowing down, getting a little sluggish in here. I'm not in love with the recent price action, but again, it's not, you know, the, the signal in, in, in which that we jumped into this is still valid. Basically looking, hey, at a weekly chart, uh, we're above an eight and 20 period, uh, rising bullishly aligned moving averages there. The signal day was here on this daily chart on this engulfing bar back here on the first. That's when we got involved in TLT. And you can see it's still holding above there if it starts to lose you know even today's lows yesterday's lows or, or surely if it loses uh, last Tuesday's lows on the eighth here we'll be out of this trade we'll be gone this TLT will have um, you know basically just tripped off our stop loss and invalidated itself but for now giving it some room volume patterns decent here over the past several weeks um, and it's a trade we'll see if it continues to materialize but you can see 8 and 20 bullishly aligned on the daily the weekly let's see if this can continue you maybe get back up to these June highs here and retest them. Uh, we'll have to see what's in the cards. It's almost almost like a little bit of a safety trade haven uh, trade defensive defensive trade, if you will. Um, with the uh, with the low amount of equity exposure we do have on, if we do start to see a rollover in equities and we do get that rotation back into those safe haven assets, into bonds, then this trade could start to work itself out. Uh, but we'll see what happens uh, for there. 
USO um, continued its weakness today. Another bearish engulfing day. I think this is what almost uh, well, I guess not quite a bearish engulfing day here on Monday, but you certainly had one here on last Thursday. You almost had one on Monday. You almost have, or you definitively have one here on Wednesday. So you can see sellers taking control here, uptick in volume. We're below this trend line. So USO, you can see starting to roll back over. Doesn't look um, you know much different than May when we had this nice rally up. Then we started the bear leg down. Same thing back here in March where we had this rally up, which started this move down. So again, longer term, that trend is still making lower highs and lower lows. You'd want to check the uh, futures contract there just to get a more accurate sort of uh, read on this price action levels. But uh, USO sellers in control here in the short term, starting to get that curl over on uh, the 8 and 20 period moving average. UNG still kind of carving out this sideways bottom. Volume's driving, drying up a little bit. I'm still paying attention to it. Uh, still think that this could be carving out some, some larger sideways range, uh, which ultimately could start to reverse and break out higher. Uh, again, I have no money behind that, waiting for an actual setup to occur. But uh, in the back of my mind, that's sort of what I'm looking for. We'll actually see if it, if, if it can actually happen. Gold, uh, I'll go to the metals next. You can see GLD having a nice day today, 74 basis points to the upside, 8 and 20 periods still moving higher, got some decent volume coming in on the past week or so, but we're right back to these highs here from uh, really April and June, which which really have uh, you know kept the lid on GLD. So we'll have to see if the third time is a charm, if we can get back above last Friday's highs here around 123 or so, then uh, we'd start to be clearing some multi-month highs and gold bulls would be very firmly in charge. Silver, uh, kind of a similar situation, not quite at these old highs from May or March of this year, but we are holding up in this short-term trend, some buy volume coming in, 8 and 20 is up. So, um, you know, silver, probably not as uh, bullish looking as gold, but but, um, you know, trying to get that work done, trying to uh, test some of this resistance. We're kind of at this trend line here on the weekly chart. So certainly got, uh, you know, it, the metals uh, bulls work cut out for it in front of in front of us for the next week or so as we start to test that multi-week, multi-month resistance areas. So that's all I got for uh, major markets. Let's take a look at some of the sector analysis. Uh, IYT having a nice bounce back, even this week up already 2% here. So IYT, if you remember, really led us on the downside. It was the first to really start to show weakness back here in early July, and then it ultimately had this breakdown, this very large range day uh, on the 27th here, down 3% for IYT. And you can see we're getting that bounce back now, eight and 20 periods starting to curl back over. We're still underneath, let's go to that weekly chart. We're still underneath this, uh, you know, call it 172 um, level. I would like to see us ultimately back above there. But, you know, if you zoom out here and look at the weekly chart, this is not a bad sort of consolidation pattern at all. Uh, this might take several more weeks, even months to fill itself out. But uh, as of right now, um, in the short term, you know, we certainly disliked IYT right in here. We put a blog post out as it started to roll back over and fail on this breakout. But if you go to that longer term time frame, again, you can see not doing a whole lot wrong, just not ready uh, from that longer term time frame to, to get that breakout uh, as it st you know as it stood in, in July when it started to break back down. So something to pay attention to, uh, XLK, you know, this thing just is, is, continues to be a monster leader. This, this uh, broke out again to new highs here, or at least closed at new highs. Uh, a little bit of a fade off of those highs, but still, I mean, if you know you, you want relative strength, it really, you don't have to look much further than the technology ETF here, XLK. Um, what else we got? XLU working as the safety haven kind of trade works. This is now taking out or getting close to taking out the highs here from June. So utilities back in action, staples uh, following you know a little bit in its footsteps, not quite at the highs here from June, but certainly showing some relative strength recently and starting to emerge now uh, with some nice relative strength on the day. Industrials even uh, kind of testing the top of this range here, the, some of this recent supply. Materials having a nice bounce back. So there are certainly sectors that saw a nice move uh, this, this, this week so far. Uh, and we're going to see if they can continue to work higher uh, to support this market. You can see XLB uh, up almost 1% on the day today. Uh, really, it's on the downside. It's it's energy, um, which made new lows here, uh, took out the lows here from July. Uh, if you recall, I was optimistic on energy that we could you know, probably start to move sideways here and stop this 
waterfall to the downside, and here we are making new lows. So that clearly uh, is, is not taking shape yet, that thesis. Um, so energy, sellers back in control, eight and 20 period bearishly aligned. And then finally, uh, we got healthcare, really biotech specifically, which uh, was up on the day today, but you can see just on a relative basis where this is, uh, you know, compared to the past couple of weeks of action. I mean, just, just take that in relation to, say, the Qs, which are already back towards highs, even the SPY kind of close back towards those highs. You look at IBB, and we're way off these highs here from earlier in July or, or certainly mid-July. Um, you can see almost like a, you know, you had this nice move to the downside with the rest of the market. Now we're rallying back up to the declining eight-period moving average. Will this be sold again? Will this downtrend now really start to take hold? Or uh, if we look at the weekly chart, are we going to suddenly kind of thrust back up here, create some type of double bottom in this support or what was support at uh, the beginning of July around 310. Will that hold and will we sort of be off to the races again or, or make a move back to those highs? Something to pay attention to. I think it's at an interesting spot here. Uh, again, this could be a nice sort of bear flag opportunity if we start to roll over, say, back below 307.50, something around these, these prior lows here. If it starts to lose those lows, I think you might have a very tactical short opportunity to come back down and retest uh, this 305 level or so if you're nimble, if you're real tactical. Um, and if, if, if the bulls can actually drive us higher here, then maybe we have something. Maybe this is a good an, an, uh, enough of a washout. Just like the rest of the market here, I'm waiting for some more information. I'm not so inclined to take a bet in this one way or the other. So um, really just kind of just sitting on my hands and, and waiting to see how this all sort of unfolds. And uh, with that, I think that's that's basically everything I had to cover. So hopefully you guys having a good week out there trading. Uh, don't fall asleep. Don't over trade. And if you like these videos, do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and talk to you again soon.